Hi, it's Green from My Chemical Free House. Today's topic is why I would not go with a green builder. And by green builder, I am meaning a builder who focuses on healthy building, especially for those with multiple chemical sensitivities, MCS. So I'm just gonna call it MCS for now. Um, and so there's two sides to it. The first side is that a builder who builds for MCS isn't usually a good builder and a good builder doesn't usually build for MCS. So I'm going to talk about both sides. And I did go through this experience myself about, I think it's six or seven years ago, might be a little more than that now. And I've watched other people go through this and I help people through the process. So I'm not an architect or building science expert. I'm a building biologist and I help people go through the process and I mainly help people choose healthy materials, but I also help guide people to um, really good resources like good architects and so how you can get this kind of really good um, help to build something really safe. So um, what I've found is that builders, especially if they're advertising that they build for MCS, um, like tiny healthy homes, um, tiny green cabins, which is now out of business, um, and Swanson's Tiny Houses. I don't know if he has another company that does larger scale houses, but um, or if the same company does larger scale houses, but, and this isn't only about tiny houses. Um, I'm trying to think of some bigger companies who have targeted MCS. I can think of a few, I can think of a few, and they also fall under the same, um, the same problem. Um, so what happened with these companies is that they were advertising um, their buildings as you know really healthy materials or really low toxicity at the expense of really good building craft and building knowledge. From what I've seen, I saw a few really big disasters. Um, my house turned out to be a really big disaster in terms of how well it was built. It was great with built with great materials because I chose the materials before I was a building biologist. I was studying all the materials and it was great. I healed so much, but my builder didn't know how to build at that time at least. Um, and that's now the company um, Tiny Health, Tiny Healthy Homes, I believe. Um, he changed the name of his business, maybe so that I didn't sue him. Don't know for sure, but, um, and you know, Tiny Green Cabins and Swanson both went through a lawsuit because of the quality of the building. That The ones that I saw, right? I haven't seen everything that they've built. Um, so I'm speaking from a few examples there so that I don't get sued by them. But um, so builders are often building um, at the expense, building, you know, with healthy or alternative materials. And by alternative, I don't mean like a great green alternative, but I mean like maybe something that's really new to the market and hasn't been tried and tested. Um, so that, I mean, and I, and sometimes you're willing to take that risk because maybe it's a, just gonna be a cosmetic problem, but sometimes it could be a really big structural problem or a really big um, problem in the moisture management system. Like it could be a, a systems problem. So um, there's lots of materials that have failed that people have recommended to me when I started um, with my building process. And we're all just going with the best information we have at the time and we can only use, you know, the information that's given by the companies and maybe some other, you know, people that have experience with them. So we're, that, you know, that's not necessarily their fault. But um, if you're building at the expense of really good building science and really good systems and good design, um, then you're gonna have a problem. You're gonna have a moldy house. You're gonna have things go wrong. It's not going to be built right. So what a lot of these um, builders who were focusing on the materials, the green materials, the MCS safe materials, is that they were focusing on that at the expense of the system and they were willing to make sacrifices that say the client requested they didn't want their windows flashed properly because they couldn't tolerate those materials that are used around the window frame. Uh, you know, when you have your wooden, bare wood 
raw wood window frame. It's called the rough opening and there's flashing, which is the tapes or they could be liquid applied membranes. Um, and you know, it's certainly possible to not tolerate those, but you don't want to skip those. This is just one example of the windows. Um, skip those materials and then you're gonna have a leaky window and then you're gonna have mold around that wood and then down on the sheathing. Um, so builders who are willing to do that aren't good builders. They're not. They may be willing, so that, that's a red flag. Um, a builder that's willing to do anything that you want to do is a major red flag. And maybe they're passing it off to you. Um, you know, maybe they've had you sign something or maybe you've become the general contractor. And maybe you're contracting out the trades because of um, your need to have control over it, but then you still have to be really careful. So those are some examples. Um, why, that's the first side. Why builders building for MCS usually, from what I've seen so far, it's not that they can't be also, they can't also be good builders, but that tends to be the case. And here's why, here's the other side. Builders that are good builders tend not to build for MCS usually, although they can. So let's go through that side. So really good builder is someone who cares about um, the design, being well designed for moisture management, um, really good um, execution obviously of the design and all the details being done right. And they care about the quality of the build, like the durability, which means really means how durable it is to water and how mold proof it's gonna be. So durability, um, it's a really big um, buzzword right now. So unfortunately, so many builders are throwing that word around that might not be that good, but um, builders that are really good are building for durability. They are building for mold prevention just by the quality of their builds. And, they're, and they may say something about high craftsmanship, which I mentioned before, which really should mean that they really care about those details. They really care about doing things well. And because you have to, um, you have to be really detail oriented to get it done right. And you have to have a lot of supervision over your trades. And um, you often have to spend more too. So I'm gonna talk more about that. So, but the reason why these builders, so these builders are really good builders are probably in really high demand usually. I have sometimes seen just a really good builder who's just a roofer or person doing insulation. I've seen two and I've interviewed so many builders. Um, so, and I was just like, why is this person doing roofing? This person's really good. But, um, and that's just, you know, a single trade. But, so the builders, like the, the, the usually the owners of the company that are building is really well built houses. Um, they're usually building, um, so yeah, they're usually in higher demand. Um, they're usually working with really good architects. So the way to find them might be through a really good architect who's also really interested in really good design, moisture management, etc. When I say good design, I'm talking about not the beautiful colors and the layout, but um, the design of what's happening in the walls and the, the, the foundation and the roof um, in terms of moisture. Um, so they'll be in high demand. They might be harder to find because you might have to go through an architect or harder to find as in, you know, they're busy. Um, you've got to get in with them and um, they may be more expensive because when you're building a high quality, you, they have to have that in their budget. It costs more. It's flat out. It costs more to build a regular style home to higher standards. Um, you could build a smaller home, you know, like there's ways you can save money. Um, you could do a simplify the roof. Um, you could simplify even the floor, like the, the whole, the whole floor plan as a whole to like a square. You often see that with the passive houses. There's a reason why they're just a square and there's just a really simple roof. Um, so there's ways to simplify the cost, but it does, um, cost more to build well. And so they tend to often build more upscale houses and it costs more to build with an architect on board, to have the architect on board for the whole time and to have them really, um, you know, thoroughly involved with the design and um, the over some of the oversight too. 
All right, so um, tying that back into why they might not build for MCS, chemical sensitivities. Um, so some of them do. I have seen some really good builders really go to extremes um, with materials and they're willing to put that time in, some of them, because you have to work back and forth and they're, they should say, uh, you know, we can't do that, but here's maybe a compromise or here's where we have to use a little bit of the canned spray foam because we have to air seal. Um, we absolutely have to seal the windows at least, um, you know, with certain uh, flashing tapes or liquid applied. Um, so there are going to, it's going to be a process with them and they would have to be willing to go through that and that could cost them more in time and maybe even in delays, um, probably in delays. If you don't have all your stuff together, you really should have all your stuff together at the beginning in terms of what you can tolerate. You should have everything tested that you can before going in. If you want to find a good builder, and this is like probably a different video topic of how to find a good builder, you should know up front which materials you can use for sure um, so that you don't get um, you don't you don't get disqualified in this process. And I sort of mentioned this during the prefab post, which I think is a really good post to look at. Um, shows you kind of how to vet the companies and not everyone's gonna want to go with the prefab, but I think you should consider the panelized systems if you're building stick build regular wood frame house um, in Canada and the US because some of these are built way better because they're built in a factory and you still need to go through this whole process of vetting them and um, the supervision of what's happening on site. So it's not like a, just a foolproof, um, you know, made and delivered and done. Um, but I think you should consider that. So I did, I did talk about this a little bit there. And that's the idea that, um, so, I was saying first, yes, they may be willing to work with you, but it's going to take more time. They almost certainly don't advertise that they work with chemical sensitivities because their focus is on building well. Um, and they probably are busy enough with clients who care for building well and care to pay for that. Um, they certainly know something about healthier materials. Almost all builders do now. Um, you know, all good builders will know something about low and zero VOC materials. But in terms of going to this extreme, extreme extent is what I'm kind of referring to. But um, the final point, and coming back to getting, possibly getting disqualified, um, is that they may actually not want to work with someone with severe chemical sensitivities um, because they know, um, because it could take longer, because it could delay them, but also because they know that it could compromise the system of building well. And especially if it's a smaller company, actually it's harder to, it's hard to say. I mean, a small company may be kind of willing to do that for you. And on the other side, a small company may not be able to take that hit of the time that's going to take and sorry the instapot is just like a theme in my videos now and i don't know how to edit them so sorry for those who have sound sensitivities um so what was i saying um so we you know whether it's a small builder, whether it's a large company, it's sort of hard to say, but um, whether they're going to disqualify you on that, but um, they're not going to want to, they're not going to compromise on their building system if it's a builder who builds well. And so that's why it's really, really important to come to them knowing which materials you definitely don't want and knowing which materials you definitely do want. Um, and especially if there's anything really fundamental that you want to take out, um, come with a really good plan. And that's why I say in the prefab article and in general, bring me onto the project before the builder. It's usually people bring me on later, sometimes when things are already going wrong with the builder, um, but usually just too late in the process. Like you shouldn't be 
choosing materials so late in the process that you may have to special order again you're going to delay things um so let's go through your material list really early on and that's going to be a process that you have to do too because i can't know for everybody what materials you're going to tolerate um i have kind of my general list that works for most people with sensitivities and then it's very targeted from there, from that base list towards um, different levels of sensitivity. And maybe if you're not actually that sensitive in terms of reactive, um, just your level of what you want to avoid, your, your, your tolerance for having toxins in your house and which ones. Um, so having that all laid out before is really important. You can then bring that um, to the architect and then the architect can maybe help you find the builder if it's a local architect. Um, you could also consult with someone like Cheryl Seiko, who you know I mentioned in almost every video because I really like her even though I don't get any kind of kickback or anything, um, because she could look over your design first and she's you know probably not local to you. Um, and you could, and you won't have the exact design until you have your site, um, but you could, you could do some work there on your materials, especially if you're thinking of doing something really unusual. And is that going to work? Hopefully you know where you're going to be buying land. Um, ideally you have your site first. Um, so um, an architect really needs your site to make the make the proper plans for it. Um, but all these things, a lot of things here have to be done in the beginning. And so those, um, so you know, let's say you do make that plan, you could bring that to a really good builder. And if we don't, and if we know, and I know what some of those materials are that are going to compromise the system. Um, and so we won't do that and we won't bring that proposal to a really good builder. So I hope that that explains the two sides of why builders who are really focused on chemical sensitivities often aren't building well and builders who are building well often are not super focused on um, extreme sensitivities. So they probably know about healthier materials um, and they may even choose not to work with someone with chemical sensitivities unless they have their plan um, down in writing, at least from the beginning. Um, and that could really help you find a good builder. And of course, you already can probably see my bias here that it's way more important to build a durable building, which means mold preventative, um, long-lasting mold, mold preventative for more than two years. Um, most buildings that I'm seeing, just like your average building going up around me, is not lasting two years. Um, there's major mistakes. So your average builder is not building very well right now in North America, in general, your average builder. Um, so you can see my bias is towards building really well, building something that's gonna last, um, not just because that's a better value, um, something that's gonna last, but because mold is a huge concern for anyone with MCS. It is a huge concern. Um, and you're going to stay in that cycle of being sick if you go from um, wherever you're starting from to your brand new house that's made very, very, very carefully, but goes moldy in a couple years. Um, that's just going to keep you sick or you're going to go back to being sick if you did get better maybe in the beginning of when the house is new and i've seen lots of people do that i've seen lots of people with improvements when they move in and then they backslide so my preference um is always going to be more preventative and does that mean you have to do some things that are a little more toxic maybe you might, we have to look at the whole picture and see if there is an alternative material for you. Um, an alternative just meaning something we can swap out that meets the requirements of the quality and the design of the system, but is safer for you. So there might be, and there might be some places where you have to compromise and you may have to let that off gas for a while, depending on you. We don't know how long. Um, exactly usually but if you've gone through all your testing on materials and you've taken the time to do that you might have some idea there 
Um, so I think it's a much better idea to have a house that um, you have to wait. Maybe you can't even move in right away and it's super discouraging and you don't even know when you can move in and you desperately need a place to live because that's why you're building a safe house. But it's still better and I know that you may have to live, people have lived in tents and shelters. Um, I don't mean like a homeless shelter, but like a shelter they made themselves, including like a greenhouse trailers um there's all kinds of things that people have lived in um while they're building and even during that off casting time in the beginning so it's better to have to wait six months and have a house that you're going to heal in for hopefully you know 20 years a house should really last um you know had the house technically last longer than that but it really to hold up to mold for 20 years or more um, is what you need to heal. And that's not what most people are building in terms of the average builder. And it's not what most people are building who are building with MCS. They're not getting that high quality build, which is really hard to get. It's, there's a lot of work involved. All right, 20 minutes, I gotta stop. All right, so I will link to the prefab post. Um, what else? Um, I think that's it for now. I think I'll just link to the prefab post that covers a little bit about what to look for. Even if you're not going for a prefab, um, I do have a post on building um, for chemical sensitivities. I'll link to that one too. That one's quite relevant um, in the kind of the steps you need to take when you're building for chemical sensitivities is the main focus of that post. All right, bye for now.